Hey folks, how's it going? It's Stellar Spark here, and today we're going to be doing another alternate history video, and this time it's going to be going to be between Governor Thomas Dewey, Vice President Henry Wallace, and Strom Thurmond. And this is going to be in the 1948 presidential election. This is going to be alternate history again, as you know. So, in the actual 1948 election, it was Thomas Dewey versus Harry S. Truman. But let's say in this timeline that in this scenario, Truman doesn't get the nomination. He drops out, endorses Wallace, and Wallace runs because... The Democrats, remember, at this point, were pretty fractured as a party. Uh, and Truman was really unpopular as a president at that point. Uh, he had, like, no union support. He broke up the strikes. And he tried to nationalize the steel industry. So he was unpopular for that. He was popular for the New Deal program, supporting and wanting to expand those and being an internationalist. But other than that, Truman was going to lose in a landslide to Thomas Dewey, who played it really safe and was pretty moderate and conciliatory. He was very cautious in trying to avoid saying anything outlandish in order to lose support. But Truman campaigned very hard and ended up winning the election. I don't think Henry Wallace would have done the same thing. I don't think Wallace would be as a good campaigner as Truman. I don't think he would have been the right candidate for the time because Wallace was more isolationist, more non-interventionist, more of a liberal Democrat, whereas Truman was Truman was pretty liberal as well, but he was more he was he could be seen as a moderate. Whereas Wallace embraced the progressivism later on. So it depends on how Wallace will run or want to run this, but I think that he would run it as a progressive. And that's what I'm assuming he would run it on. And also expanding New Deal programs and national health care, supporting the unions. I think Wallace would have more union support than Truman. So we'll see how it turns out, but. Let's start filling in some of the map here. So let's start in the West here. I think the Western states are very interesting because a lot of the Western states supported the expansion of the New Deal, which Wallace supported. But a lot of these states are pretty isolationist, like Montana was pretty isolationist. The other ones were moderate. And the Republicans were pretty, they had an isolationist streak as well, but Dewey was pretty internationalist. I believe both candidates supported civil rights. Uh, excuse me. Wallace supported desegregation. Dewey was liberal on civil rights. And I think the communism factor would really be the issue here. Wallace wasn't that strong on the Soviets. He really didn't, He thought it would lead to war, any confrontation with the Soviets. So I think that Wallace could appear pretty dovish on a lot of foreign policy issues. I'm not sure that would really resonate out here, but the, in terms of the New Deal, he would be competitive. I just think that he would be too far left for some of these states. So I'm going to give Dewey pretty much all the West here. I think that Dewey would win all the West because he's pretty moderate. Wallace would be more of a liberal, progressive, which I don't think would be very popular, especially him having a pretty soft streak with the communists uh, would be a little bit too far left for this era and especially with a national health care law so i do think that dewey would win a lot of the western states along with nevada california would be competitive i think wallace would win the bay area but otherwise dewey would sweep the rest of the state oregon i think that oregon and washington wallace could be competitive due to the non-interventionist isolationist tone uh, of his campaign rhetoric. So I think that he could be competitive in these two states. And same thing with the New Deal. 
But I do think that Dewey was modern enough to win Oregon. I'm not sure about Washington State. I'm going to just give Wallace Washington State. I think it would be very competitive. But I think Wallace would get over the line due to the new deal. Montana is actually interesting. I'm going to make an interesting call. I'm going to say that Montana actually goes to Henry A. Wallace. I think Wallace would be doing much better than Truman in some of these Midwestern states that were pretty very isolationist states. And especially his home state of Iowa, I think he would pick up Iowa. I think he would do well in the Great Plains states. I'm not sure he would win if he would win any, but he'd be very competitive. They would probably be within five percent. But just to be safe, I'm going to give all these states to Dewey. I'm going to give Wallace, Oklahoma, Texas. A lot of these states also were very supportive of FDR. They were pretty segregationist, a lot of these southern states, so some of them are going to go to Strom Thurmond, like Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina. Alabama, states like Alabama and Georgia potentially could even go to Strom Thurmond. I don't think Wallace had a lot of southern appeal whatsoever, so I'm actually going to give Alabama to Thurmond. I'm going to say that Wallace barely wins Georgia and Florida, as well as North Carolina and Tennessee. I think just due to vote splitting, he would barely get a plurality of the vote in these states. Arkansas, I'm not sure if that was a state that went to Strom Thurmond or not. I think it went to Truman. And that would be a, another state that he would win uh, with uh, less than 50% of the vote. Missouri, though, would go to Wallace. Truman was pretty popular there. I think Truman won a campaign for Wallace. And Missouri, another pretty moderate state, but I do think that Truman would have helped Wallace there. All these other states, I really don't know if Wallace would have had a lot of appeal, but I think that in states like Wisconsin and Michigan, there was a lot of anti-communist sentiment. They had the House on American Committee, and they wanted to root out communism, and I, I don't think that Wallace would be portrayed as someone that – really would like that whatsoever. And he actually was outspoken against Truman trying to root out communism in the government. So I think that a lot of these states would vote overwhelmingly for Thomas Dewey because he was way more internationalist and taking more a little bit more of a harder stance on the Soviet Union. So I do think that these two states would go to Dewey. Indiana, Illinois, Dewey was liberal on civil rights. I think he would have even been moderate on unions, maybe even right to work, but probably he would have moderated a little bit to win a lot of these northern states since he was a pretty liberal Republican governor in New York. Ohio, same thing. Kentucky, very close. Border state. I think Kentucky would have went to Dewey due to being moderate on unions. West Virginia typically was a working class state. I think we would have been close within 1%, but would have probably went to Wallace. Minnesota had a Democratic streak, so I'm going to give that state to Wallace. And now moving up to New England. So Virginia, I actually think would go to Dewey, and it went to Truman in uh, our timeline. But Virginia, a very internationalist, militaristic state, definitely wouldn't have voted for someone who wanted, didn't want war. So Virginia goes to Dewey because of that. And I believe Dewey won the rest of these states. And he's way over the top at 309 electoral votes. But it, New York, I think, would have been the closest out of all these states. The other states, I think, would have been 5 to 10 percent wins for Thomas Dewey. New York was his home state. I think that would have been, th been within 1 percent. Uh, I think Wallace would have been very competitive there. But in the other states, not so much. New England, I think, would have went mostly for Dewey. They were against the communists. Uh, except for Massachusetts and Rhode Island, which tend to be a little bit more liberal on a lot of social issues and economic issues. So I'm going to give those to Wallace. But this is what the map turns out to look like. Dewey gets 329 electoral votes, Wallace at 164, and Strom Thurmond at 38. I do think that a few states that could flip here, I'd say that like Washington, Montana could flip Republican. I think that Flips for Wallace, I could see Virginia flipping. New York, potentially getting an upset there on New York and Kentucky. But other than that, I think that all of these other states here 
I'm pretty sure about the calls that I'm making, especially in the Midwest. I think that Dewey would have done much better against Wallace in the Midwest than against Truman. He probably would have campaigned a little bit harder against Wallace. Wallace would have probably been more susceptible to, to those attacks uh, on communism. So that would have been unpopular with a lot of voters in the upper Midwest. So they would have voted for Dewey. So Thomas Dewey would have won against Henry Wallace, I think. And this is what I think would have happened in this scenario. But let me know if you guys agree with this down below in the comments section. I appreciate that. If you enjoyed this video, leave it. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the social media. Check out the podcast, the website, and the blog. I'd appreciate your support as always. And that's really all I have for now. But let me know if you agree or disagree with this prediction in the comments section. But stay tuned for new content. I'm going to have the alternate uh, history episode for the alternate history of the United States coming out very soon, likely by next early next week. But I'm going to leave it there, folks. It's all I have for now. And this is Stellar Spark signing off. Till next time, folks.